the invisible seal. Now let's talk about seals just a moment. It would seem that some people have a great deal of difficulty. So let's just go back to the beginning, take the etymology of the word. Actually, let's define it first. The word seal actually has two meanings. And originally it was uh, created ba basically by stonemasons. And in other words, they cut the design. Now, a seal having the two meanings, the object that makes the impression or inscription is called by the same name as the impression it leaves in the wax or whatever, all right? Kind of unique there, and I really want you to grab onto that and think about it. Probably as far back as you can take the word, it had to do with um, a hook or something that you would lock something with, much like the hook of a shepherd's staff that would secure something just as a shepherd would secure his sheep that passed under the staff or the rod. And um, good people always respect that seal of property. Now, seals also, I'm going to talk about physical seals and then we're going to go to the invisible seal. Jezebel probably was one of the first in 1 Kings chapter 21 that utilized the um, seal maybe for wrong purposes. Because she took Ahab's seal to show you who was boss in the family and Jezebel stamped out some orders. And I mean that was the king's law. Many of you go to court at different times and perhaps you've seen a seal you thought was used in a uh, diverse way or an unfair way. Well, that's the way people are, not perfect. All right? So you might bear in mind Jezebel's escapade there in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 beginning with about the 8th verse and make a side study. Now to the invisible seal. God, and I intend to document this in this lecture, sealed his elect in the first earth age. Can you see it? No. You cannot see that seal. Unless you wear it. Now if you wear it and you go into a group, it doesn't take long, though it's invisible. You go into a group and listen to someone talk or discuss with something, it doesn't take you too long to know that person has the seal. So let's go to the great book of Isaiah and let's discover what God has to say about the seal and the gentle way that he brought it forth that we might better understand. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. A seal that can't be read. A seal that not too many see. A seal that only God's elect are aware of. And God brings this seal forth in the 29th chapter. I want you to note and catch verse 1. Woe to Ariel. I want you to know what that word means in the Hebrew. It means the hearth of God, but it also means the lion of God. Now, I want you to make a mental note of that. I'm going to be calling on that knowledge before we finish and almost at the end called also the Lion of God. All right? So the hearth of God, symbolic of Jerusalem, that city and events that would transpire there, and a city that has a great deal to do with the seal. That is to say, those that wear the seal or have the seal, have acquired the seal, understand many things that are written about Jerusalem that perhaps not everyone does. Let's find out why not everyone does. We'll begin, if we may, in verse uh, 7, for the sake of time. The, the discussion, Ariel, the hearth of God or the lion of God. Uh, who is the lion of God? The lion of the tribe of Judah. It's Jesus Christ, of course, all right, so that you understand that. And, of course, that city is the city that David founded by his name, Yaroshalam. All right, verse 7. 
of uh, Isaiah 29, and it reads, And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, the hearth or the, of God or the lion of God, even all that fight against her and her munitions and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. That's about what they amount to. It's just a bad dream. They kind of, by the time they wake up in the morning, that being the Lord's day, it's going to seem like a bad dream to them, all right. A very bad dream. I want you to see in the next few verses the people of today, as you look around you, people that have no seal, that are not aware of the seal. Verse 8, it shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth big steak. Man, I mean, we got a ribeye here that's fit for a king, okay? But he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and beholdeth, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, he's weak, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Now, to fight against Mount Zion is to fight against God's word, the hearth of God. Uh, understand in a spiritual sense. And people want to strive, they want to think and dream to do good for God. And they, many of them go to churches, a church perhaps where the seal is not present, that is taught, that is to say all of God's word, but basically traditions of men or precepts of men, rather than from this word. And they go away, they feel maybe like they're fed, they dream they had really an emotional gig there. But when they come out and go back to Monday, they don't have the strength. This is talking about spiritual food, understand. They're still running on empty, though they just filled up at the station. That's what it's like without the seal. No peace of mind. No understanding. Simply in wonderment. What in the world is going on? What's happening? Verse 9, stay yourselves, stop, and wonder. You meditate, think for a moment. Cry ye out and cry, they are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. What did God say in Romans chapter 11? He was going to send on all but the election. He said, I will send the spirit of slumber, which in the Greek is stupa. They're in a stupa. Stop at a, a busy airport someday and just watch for a moment. Just look, observe. Don't say anything, just take it in. And if you find a one happy person out of a thousand after the greetings are said, you're going to be lucky. I'm talking about spirit-filled, seal-filled, individual, can-do person of God. You know, Stop and think about it. That's what's in this world today. Why? The seal isn't broken that much. And those people go hungry. All they can do is dream about heaven. And forever and ever. And by and by. And pie in the sky. And they could have it today. Peace of mind, contentment, understanding. When the seal is lifted and the scales fall from their eyes, spiritualized. And they see God's plan of the ages, the simplicity in which he teaches. Didn't need a seal at all. A child can understand. But yet when God puts his mighty hand of stu and places that spirit of stupa on them. You can't remove it. I can't. Unless God deems it fit. And man, when those scales start, fall start falling away, and with some people, get out of the way. Get out of the way. They're going to be excited when they begin to see what this is all about today. 
And that they can have a place in it. That God can use even them. Sinner that they are. Sinner that I, we all fall short. But some people get on this kick about, Oh, no, I had a dream last night. Lord couldn't use me after that dream. Whoa. You can't help what you dream. That's the dumb flesh dreaming, all right? Wake up. Grow up, all right? Now, verse 10. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. And has closed your eyes, your spiritual eyes. Your other eyes can, oh, there's a tree, I better step around it. <laughs> okay. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, the seers is a Greek word for prophets, okay. Hath he covered. I mean, they can't see nada, nothing, zip, zero. They try, they really do, and I think their hearts, many of them, mean well. And they want to help people. But hey, no seal, no see them. Okay? No seal, no see them. I know one thing that might be an education is sometime in the summer or spring, I forget which, spring and summer, I think, take a float trip down the Colorado River and you'll know what no see them means. That's a little bug that will bite thee and you no see them. <laughs> okay. Oh, they're bad. But there's a lot of things go on and if you, in this world. And if you can't see, you already have the bite. And it's too late. All right. So God himself, it's important that you log that in your mind. It wasn't Satan that sent the spirit of stupor upon them. And did God do this because he thinks less of some people? No. It's just that they don't have the guts or the courage to stand against Antichrist. And it's better for them to be sleeping in innocence, that is to say ignorance, than to be accountable. For there's one price that comes with the seal, which is excellent. You're accountable. You could even commit the unpardonable sin. Whoa, that's deep, isn't it? No, it isn't. It just means that you go with Antichrist after you know better, and you're not about to do that. I know most of you, I've heard it, I'm ready. I wish Satan would get here. I'm ready to be delivered up and let the Holy Spirit speak to me and kick dragon. I'm ready, okay? I know you, okay? You're not going to commit it. That's impossible. But God, uh, digression perhaps, God does it from love that he sends this sleep upon them. It will be morning soon enough. It's just possible that you might have something to do with the reveille call. All right? Think about it. Okay? God sent the spirit of slumber. Again, I would remind you if you want to know when he declared that for absolute in the New Testament, Romans chapter 11. Okay? Verse 11. <clears throat> Not Romans chapter 11, 11. It would be Romans chapter 11 about verse uh, 7 or 8, somewhere along there. Now let's go to verse 11 in Isaiah 29. And the vision of all is becoming unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned. I want you to know we got us a scholar here. I mean, he is educated. He knows the languages. He knows what those languages say. He knows what bar in Hebrew means, which the son, all right? Or, or if it were to be ogamak, son, okay? So uh, point made, all right? He can read the languages. He's educated. See, after you have eyes to see, you forget about parables, proverbs, and many things that Christ did hide from certain eyes. But it's so very simple. Think about it a moment. Words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this. I pray thee. I mean, they're looking for truth. They're trying, okay? And he saith... I cannot, for it is sealed. Can't understand it. 
how many have you ever known that picked this word up? In your childhood, perhaps. Or in later years. Picked it up and what they pulled from it was so foreign to you that you wonder where it came from. Or they would simply tell you we're not supposed to understand that yet. How many of you have heard someone say Revelations is not supposed to be understood at this time? Whew. You talk about El Dumo. <laughs> not, just making friends, influencing people. Okay, uh, But it's true, nevertheless. They can't help it. Okay, Can't help it a bit. Because it's sealed to them. Try as they might. They, they don't understand that there are three world ages, that there was an age before this, and that's why the scientific community can go out and find a, a remains of a mammoth or a, a dinosaur that's uh, millions of years old. Just shakes their credentials. And they have to say, there's a quick aging process. <laughs> you know? Oh, it happens quick. But it didn't, <laughs> okay? So they fall totally out of step. Why? It's sealed, my friend. And not all eyes can see it, nor understand. That seal is invisible. Because you have it in here. And when you wear that seal of God, do you know what that says to Satan? Hands off. Hands off. Do you know why? You can't deceive a sealed in God person. They're too intelligent for that because the book has been open to them and they have eyes to see. So what I want you to know, don't take any credit away from this old boy. He was educated. He was smart. He was called a scholar, but he could no more crack that word then he could fly to the moon without a shuttle, okay? And um, it was just simply sealed to him as many things are to people today. Verse 12, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. And then there are some in that category that say, But stick around a minute. The Holy Spirit will give me all I need to know. I don't need the Word of God. You know, that's the unlearned. If you want to know who the unlearned are, that's the unlearned. It is true. If God wanted to, he could do it. But God doesn't do business that way. He does it the way this book states. And no other way. So that's why you want to stick to the book. For as Jesus would tell you, it is written. Have you never read? Many people think they have, but they read without possessing the seal or having the seal broken, whereby they could open the pages and just slip into the wonder and the majesty of God's flowing truth. So the old boy was honest. He said, hey, I can't handle it. Okay, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me, boy, they're trying, with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart, that's to say their mind, far from me, and their fear, that's to say their reverence, to revere properly translated from the Hebrew. Far from me, their fear to ward me is taught by the precept of men, not God, men. Well, dear brother, you ought to talk to my preacher. Okay. If you, if you want to really learn something, just put that book down and go talk to my preacher. Huh? Well, maybe you'll go talk to his preacher. This is the way it would be sometimes. And that preacher might read one verse out of here, and then he's going to pop hot air for an hour. Okay, You're not going to learn anything. You're going to be like that old boy that dreamed he had an apple pie. And when it comes out to where the rubber hits the road to, to give you peace of mind, to learn how to be successful, to be somebody, 
you're not going to know come sick them, come here from sick them, whether to come or to go. Because the only road to lasting success is written here. God will give you everything you can take care of. All right? God will give you everything that you can take care of if you seek it. The precepts of men, old traditions of men. Just like the word rapture. Not in God's word. And yet they make an entire religion out of it. And with that excuse, with that excuse of so-called rapture, then comes the saying, you don't have to understand God's word because you're going to be gone. Do you see what a difference the seal makes? And you see the folly and you see the false teachings. But don't worry, they can't help it. Don't be too hard on them. Be hard enough that those that have eyes to see and ears to hear will come out. And then the rest, let them sleep on, sweet Charlotte. Okay? They'll be fine. We'll get there. God, it took God uh, uh, seven days to get this old earth shaped up. He didn't do it all in one day. And don't forget how many uh, day, years there are to a day of the Lord. A thousand of them. Okay. So don't get in too big a hurry. It doesn't hurt to feel anxious in this generation because you're in the generation of the fig tree. That's the last one. So you can't afford to make many mistakes. Okay? Without repentance, of course. Then he'll always pick you back up. So precepts of men will lead you down Primrose Lane. They will deceive you. If it isn't written, you better be real careful about what you believe. Verse 14. Therefore, behold. That behold means you look here. I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. Even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And you know, wisdom without the seal does. There's really no wisdom to it, though they are very wise in ways of the world. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. They're going to be deceived, fooled. It's easy to be feel, fooled if you don't know God's plan. Then you're in a guessing business. And I'm going to tell you what, I've never known anyone yet to this day that was in the guessing business that weren't wrong 50% of the time. Well, you know, if they're really a wise person playing the odds, maybe 40, 60. Verse 15, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? You know, it's real easy to say, well, our organization is kind of a God in a way, as long as we go by it, it'll be okay. Well, it's according to whether it aligns with God's work or not, okay? Precepts will get you in trouble. Deep stuff, all right? Deep stuff. 16, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. When you try to make right wrong and wrong right, it's going to be like the potter's clay. For shall the work say to him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing formed say of him that formed it, framed it rather, he had no understanding. I'm an ugly pot because he didn't know what he was doing. Well, God is the potter. And if I were you, if you think he made you an ugly pot, uh, I'd be careful if I were you, okay? Because it doesn't pay to hanky with God. You may not know what he's doing, but I assure you, you should strive to find out because he does know what he's doing. He said somebody that's playing church like that is like some clay pot saying to the clay maker, you didn't do it right, Jake. Clay breaks too easy, my friend. When you anger the potter, be careful. Be very careful. For these bodies of ours are clay. 
And do you know something? You may have never been broken, your heart broken, but you can break a heart pretty easy, all right? Especially some of you handsome ladies, you just don't know the power of heartbreak. I'm checking again, all right? 17, all right? It is not yet a little while, I'm sorry, is it not yet a little while? And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. You know what? That means the, the cedar trees, forest. Okay, Lebanon, mountains and forest. Rough, all right? And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. In other words, I'm going to change it. Cultivated land's going to be forest and so forth. Does that make sense to you? Well, God is saying that makes as much sense as you turn it upside down with everything else. And naturally, if you have the seal broken, you know what earth age is coming. And you know what will happen to Lebanon. It's going to be a fruitful field. And what is that forest? The trees, the people that feed and are nourished on a perfect earth all right, in the third earth age. Wisdom, you bet. 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. What day? In that day, when I make things right. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. What a wonderful time that's going to be. Do you know why? God has opened their eyes at that time. And you have work to do. That's why God has election. That's why God has people that bear the seal. 19, the meek also shall increase. That's the oppressed. You feel oppressed at times? They try. Don't let them see you sweat on your first cruise, all right? The oppressed shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor, the humble, among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Hey, good times coming. But never, just because you read a verse like that, think, well, I've got to wait till then to rejoice. No, you don't. If you don't rejoice because you have the seal, I dare say maybe you don't have the real seal yet. All right? Because it is something really special in this generation. 20. For the terrible one is brought to naught. Who is the terrible one? Well, let's see. You know, how many guesses do I get? <laughs> the Antichrist, Satan, dragon, devil, whatever name you want to call him. And the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity, that's to say crime, are cut off. Uh, they, they can't keep awake to preserve it, all right, because their eyes are opened, and he's in the pit. 21, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth, that tries to judge or do what's right, counsel right in the gate, judgment seat. And turn aside the just for a thing of naught. That is to say, into confusion. There's going to be an end to that kind of stuff. You see a lot of it today. I mean, I'd really hate to admit it to you, but there's even some of it in politics today. You know, things going around like that. Confusion. He said and she said. All right? That sort of thing. Okay? 22. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, he, he could cut that, concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face not now wax pale. That means embarrassed, hungry, the countenance is going to be on that face. The countenance of what? Happiness, joy. Why? And you don't waste a day without enjoying it now and just make room and let God know you love him and make room for blessings. They're going to come. It's going to happen to you. 23. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear, that is to say love, revere, the God of Israel. Not the evil one any longer. Not the Antichrist claiming to be Jesus, claiming to be God, but the true Father. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. 
There's a time coming, beloved, when every seed you planted, they're going to admit, hey, that friend of mine was a friend indeed because they were right. wonder why I didn't listen. But you see, that very truth might save them at the end of the millennium. That seed you planted may not do that much good here because of the seal. But like I said, be patient. It takes time and we have the millennium before us. That doesn't mean be lazy now. You understand the value that I place upon that word or the power strength. Don't be impatient if a seed doesn't take. If it isn't time, they can't help it. It doesn't mean you're a poor teacher. I would hate to think of all the homes that we go into and some of the letters I receive from ministers that I judged my ability to teach by their judgment. All right? You may not believe this, but some of them think I'm not so hot. Okay? Yeah. They do. They don't. Some of them do. Some of them never miss a lecture, you know? It's easy to drum up a sermon when somebody's teaching from here and, you know, instead of a, a, a rerun or something. <laughs> hey, it's all right. No problem. I could care less if it helps. Good. Well, I better not go into stories. No, I, I will not go on stories because we're on national television right now. And, and if the individual could be listening that I would be talking about. Otherwise, I would share it with you. So see, you're just out of luck. Sorry. But people do learn from the Word. Be patient with them. It may take them a while to come around. But believe me, they will come around in time because it states right there. They're going to learn doctrine, and that's God's doctrine. Doctrine that drops like the dew. I want you to open your Bibles now to the New Testament, to the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians, <clears throat> and we're going to see what Paul has to say here. Concerning the seal. Kind of like who is it that wears this seal, okay? And there's a lot of places we could go. I choose this one. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 and it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. He did what? He blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Boy, that's a load. Have you collected yours? Hmm? You should because it's written right here. And it's yours just for claiming it. You are an inheritor of the Father. If, you're, if he's your father, hey, that's what he did it for was his children. Verse 4, listen carefully. According as he hath chosen us to him. He did what? He has chosen us to him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Why? How could that possibly be? Is the seal removed that you're familiar with the first earth age? Of course. What happened in the first earth age? The verb to foundation is kataboom, which means the overthrow. What overthrow? Satan's overthrow. Well, why would God choose you at Satan's overthrow? Boy, you know, you'd really be a dingbat if you couldn't figure that one out, huh? I mean, really, and I'll, I'm a pretty direct person, but I mean, you just stop and think about that question. At Satan's overthrow, why would God choose you? It's obvious you weren't riding his back, unless it was, was deep spurs with big rows, you know, kicking it in, all right? No, I think not. Because you stood against him, of course. You proved yourself. You were tested. He didn't pick you because you're the prettiest or the sweetest or just really the best person. He chose you because of what you could do at the katabo, the overthrow. God is always fair. He chose you because you're a can-do type person. You could dig the spurs in when you have to and you can love when you have to at the same time. 
That's why he chose you. Now, do you know something? That would sound like a lot of mishmash. The words I just spoke, if you did not have the seal. Number one, you wouldn't know about the first earth age because you've got blinders on that you can't see past 6,000 years. <laughs> this Bible says that this earth is 6,000 years old. It doesn't. This earth Bible says it's millions of years old. See, unlearned as they are, they try, they try. See, I just may, I use that point to show you what a difference the seal makes. Now, what is it God expects out of you now that he has chosen you if you wear that seal? Uh, without blame before him in what? Battle? No, in love. Okay. Verse 5. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. Boy, that's a heavy one before the foundations. Think about that one for a moment, all right? To himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You know what? It's always going to be exactly the way God wills it. That's why the word is so precious. That's the way it's going to happen, okay? You can count on it. Six, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He did what? He made us accepted. I know you've got faults. I know you mess up at times. But God made you accepted. That's why you wear the seal because you've got courage to stand against Satan and to hold the fort, to hold the line, to do battle. He knows he can count on you. That you're not some hothouse lily that's going to wilt the first time something happens to you. Or the first time you have to make a decision. It's going to crack and you're going to be able to perform. Because God appreciates discipline in his troops. That's why he chose you. Isn't that a good reason? You betcha. Seven. Always beware a man that answers his own questions. Okay. <laughs> Verse 7, if I wasn't a good friend of yours and know you all pretty good, I wouldn't have taken that liberty. Okay, verse 7 reads, in whom we have redemption through his blood. All those little hang-ups you've got, friend, there it is. Redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. He loves you so much that he's willing when you say, Father, forgive me. It's gone. He blots it out. He said, hey, don't ever bring it up to me again. I forgave you and I don't want to hear about it. It's gone. Hey, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom. Where that good now? In all wisdom and prudence. Think about it. Nine. Having made known unto us, I repeat, having made known unto us the mystery of of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself whatever he proposes honey that's the way it's going to be but he has shown you the mystery what does that mean the seal's gone the seal's broken if he shows you the mystery therefore you can rest assured that if you are elect if you were chosen before the foundations of this earth, you wear the seal of God. You have eyes to see. You're not wearing that sleep, that slumber. You've got a lot to be thankful for. It's precious. Precious that you are. The mystery of God's will is his plan, his purpose. The simplicity of it that flows. Verse 10. And in the, this is the object, okay? You want to know God's object? Listen to it. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Where are you now? But you're sure not in heaven. You're on earth. Well, who is he going to use on earth to do that? Don't look behind you. 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 That's why he gives you the seal is to do something so that he can use you in his word to witness against the evil one, to help 
friends, to do that that he has uh, obligated us to, the object in the fullness of time. Whoa, whoa, what's the fullness of time? The generation of the fig tree. It began in the year of our Lord, 1948. I can remember it real well. Some of you weren't born yet, but that's fine. That generation. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Oh man, I love it. I love it. God owns everything. And you're inheriting from him. That's always exciting, is it not? Obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He doesn't play guessing games. He knows exactly what he's doing. That's why it is written and that's why it will come to pass exactly as it is written and that should be assurance to you that are able to crack open the book and read that plan with wisdom and understanding to know what tomorrow brings. To know where you should be what frame of mind you should be in to bring about the object that God has in store for you to complete it. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. I wonder what that first trusted mean. Well, that stood by him at the catabo, the overthrow. 13, in whom ye also trusted others that came in after that ye heard the word of truth. That's to say the good news, the seal, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed, listen carefully, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's powerful. Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What promise? The will. The inheritance. It's yours. If you wear the seal. If you care. If you want to serve him. This is heavy stuff to him. It really is. Simple. Nothing really difficult about it. So don't get the big head just because you can understand. It's so simple. A child can understand it. If the seal is removed. So we, if we're going to get the big head about anything, and we really shouldn't, it's that he's our father and we know it. And that we know what tomorrow brings and through that comes peace of mind. You don't wake up still hungry. You wake up well fed from his word. Sticks to your ribs. Makes a can-do type person out of you. One more verse. Which in the earnest of our inheritance. Do you, that word earnest is a legal term. It means your down payment guaranteed lead pipe cinch. Okay? Do you understand that lingo? I put it in about three or four colloquial terms there. Okay? Uh, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints, the saints, the election, the set-aside ones, sealed in the Holy Spirit of promise, because God promised that seal. He promises that truth to you. He promises His way. He's not going to change it. You can count on it. It will come to pass exactly as it's happened. Let's go to the book of Re Revelation and... Just hit a few verses and I'm going to close then, okay? Revelation chapter 5, okay? I ask you to remember the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion of God from Ariel. The Egyptians had a word called, uh, instead of A-R, it's H-R, Harel, which is the lion of the tribe of, uh, uh, the lion of God, okay? Uh, chapter 5, verse 1, the great book of Revelation. And if some man has ever told you you're not to understand this, you tell him to go fly a kite on a still day. <laughs> All right? Verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. 
Now that means it was complete. When it says it's written within and without, that means it's got everything you need to know. Okay? Verse 2, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. He wasn't a gentle little thing. A sweet little old cherub flying around. Now he cried with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? I don't know it was done for you. Whew. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Whew. Verse 4. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Whew. Maybe this is where some of these preachers say you're not supposed to understand this. Okay? Scary. I mean, five. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. You got them? Of course you do. And of course you know. And of course Christ, the foundation, the rock on which you stand, the firm foundation that never shakes in your life, but the solidity of your maturity in Christianity, not being a religion, but a reality, your life, uh, whereby you can serve Him. That's why He opened it. Therefore, in Him, His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you can see too. If... You have the seal. Not everybody does. I'm sorry. But it would be unfair to them if they did. I hope you understand. But Ariel loosed those seals. And that's why I want you to get the tie between Isaiah 29 and this. Okay? And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. That's a time period for you. You got it? The Passover lamb. That means after the crucifixion, okay? Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth unto all the earth. Verse 7. Do you know what? I was just hit with one of my Passover messages. If I look blank there for a minute, forgive me. But I'm rejoicing in my heart, and you're not going to know the Passover. Seven. Okay. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. The lamb could take it. He could do it. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, that's the, I, I hate that this word is translated beast. I really do because it's the living beings. They're not beasts. They were protectors of the altar. They shouldn't be called beast in English. It's, it leaves a bad taste. Zoom. Okay. Uh, and four and twenty elders, that's the twelve apostles, maybe, eleven and one, and the twelve patriarchs, all right, of the family, uh, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Do you think your prayers aren't heard? Of course they are. They're bottled. And they sang a new song, saying... Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And you are, you're brought forth in this generation, whereby having eyes to see and wearing the seal of God in your forehead. Let's turn, turn on to chapter 7 for me. Hey. There was the four winds, which is the four angels, wanted to end that earth age. And somebody told them to stop. You know why? There were a few souls hadn't been born in the flesh yet. Us, for one. Okay? Uh, so, what did he say? 7, chapter 7, Revelation, verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the uh, earth, that's the spirits, Ruach, okay, and that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That means bringing 
diverging, um, four coming all together, bringing destruction, okay? And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Whoa, what's that? You better not ask me that now. Not this far into the lecture, okay? Having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That's important. What's in your forehead? Your brain. You're supposed to use it. It's not just put up there to fill out your face so that you look pretty and full and healthy. It's put there, wired into your central nervous system, whereby if your big toe gets stepped on, it sends a message up and the mouth says, ouch. You know, it's really a viable piece of equipment. You need it, all right? But he places the seal where? Right at the root of your thinking. Right in your mind. Which means, basically, you have studied and carried the purpose and the will of God in your forehead. Do you think that I needed this Bible to preach this today? Do you think you did? You would have understood quite nicely. But we've got to do this because of that thing sitting over on the wall over there. And that one on that wall over there and that one back there. There's a few million join us through that, okay? We did it for them. I just wanted you to know that. All right, and there are a lot out there that didn't need it. But this is why you want to make certain you have it. There is a time coming, and it's written of in the ninth chapter of this great book. There's a war. It's already stewing. It's already begun between Satan and our Father. And you've already chosen sides, whether you know it or not. Well, you know it. Okay, you know which side you're on. You know what you've chosen. And that war has begun, but there are certain powers and authorities that come with the seal. Though it be invisible, I assure you it is not invisible to Satan. I'm not saying he can read your mind, but he reads your actions. He knows you, what, how, what to expect. He knows you from before. Chapter 9, verse 1. In conclusion... And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. And that's to put old Satan in there, and, but first we're going to let out a little smoke. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. I, I want to give you a clue. It doesn't have to be a pit. All you got to do is take the lid off of this earth right here. The atmosphere. And it's there. Pollution. Locust. By that I mean this is Satan's army and his children, the Kenites and all those that are deceived by him. Okay? Just for your thought. Three. And there came out of the smoke locust out of the earth... And upon them was given power as the scorpions of the earth hath power. You've all heard me teach how the scorpion, why it was chosen here because of its method of taking its prey. It doesn't have a stomach. It's got to latch on to you and regurgitate inside your body and its, juice, its digestive juices and it turns your backbone to mush. And then it draws that out after it ferments a day or so and it feels good. To the scorpion. In other words, they draw you out and turn you to mush. That's why God would choose them. Verse 4, for you. And it was commanded then. This is from God. Commanded. It's not a maybe. Commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. That means they're not real locusts. Okay, wake up for me. Neither any green thing, boy are they not locusts, that's the only thing a locust cares for, cares for. Neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. In other words, take them to the funny farm. Now I probably shouldn't say that, but I mean, they'll think they're in the funny farm by the time he gets through with them. 
why would he order Satan and his people to not touch his anointed? That is to say, those with the seal of God in their forehead. The seal given by the Holy Spirit, whereby the Holy Spirit could speak through them. It is the Holy Spirit that makes the impression. And when you place that seal upon something, a word of truth then it is sealed also for sooner or later. And that's none of your business. It's God's business. So learn to be patient and thank God that you have that seal. Now, inasmuch as the mark of the beast is also in the forehead, that's where your brain is, what does that mean? It means people are deceived by him, thinking he's Jesus. But if you have... God's word saying the Antichrist is coming first, claiming to be Jesus, you're too smart for that. He can't touch you because you know him. So you see the simplicity of the seal, but yet how precious to own it. Because in another place it is written where God told Satan and all of his cronies, touch not mine anointed and he meant it that's why his anointed are so blessed in this generation that they're given the ability to take that word forth to plant those seeds to the loved ones and to the precious children of God and never never think unkindly of someone that doesn't have eyes to see or ears to hear they can't help it. They're blinded. Does that make them a good person? No. But don't judge them yet. Let God do that, all right, the judging. And that's not that you're to party with them. Plus, plus after having planted the seed, then you're through. your job is through there. Go on, okay? You might have a whole bag of seed, and if you waste it all on one guy that's blinded, what are you going to do about these out here that we're supposed to hear? Okay? So, just plant a seed and pray to God that he will water it and cause it to germinate. And then that one comes to you and says, Oh, what do you mean by that? Okay? Then you know you got them. Okay? You about know you got them. So, what a precious thing that you can wear that seal of God by knowing the mystery of the ages of God and what he expects from us. So simple, so loving, and so true. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you, Father, for the breaking of the seals which the Lamb accomplished for us, that we could take that word and teach it, Father, as a many-membered body, to take that beautiful truth forth, Father, planting seed for seed, person for person, covering, Father, that that you would have us cover at this time. Bless all of these. May they be a blessing to all they come in contact with, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' precious name, amen.